Divesting Gone Wrong. T.T. Branch. Desperate for a non-black child. Who is T.T. Branch? She was one of the founders of Miss Jessie's hair care line and salon. Granted she was biracial in the white community, biracials are the black people of white people. Perhaps it's just me, T.T. and her sister didn't look stereotypically mixed although they had an Asian mom. They looked like, at best average looking black women. This is most likely the reason why T.T. chose bottom shelf Brad because she just wanted a non-black child. Your thoughts as we proceed? T.T. Branch deleted herself allegedly, but let's discuss some things that went on because she decided to divest. T.T. she created a profile on Match.com. She ended up finding a man named Anthony Spada on there. Now Anthony was a couple of years younger than T.T. He had a son named Anthony Spada Jr. T.T. has no children and he came from Pennsylvania. But T.T. was a person with a big heart so it didn't bother her the fact that he did not have the amount of wealth that she had. And Anthony was a swooner. He came off acting like he was very supportive of T.T. that he was trying to motivate her. But eventually his true color started to come to the forefront of the relationship. So knowing that T.T. had mental issues and that she was a wealthy businesswoman, he began to use her. Monetarily, he was able to. Anthony had exceptional control over her while fully aware that her mental health was severely compromised, her sister claimed. She further said in just two years, Anthony, age 43, managed to extract hundreds of thousands of dollars from TT to launch his own beard care business, Maestro's Classics, $420,000 to buy and renovate a Pennsylvania house, and a $135,000 interest-free loan. He got money for his mother's therapy and $35,000 to pay off his grown son's college loans. Her sister further said T.T. was at the point of removing Anthony about her life, but she could not because Anthony promised to publish all the compromising pictures of her which he had taken. Within days of her passing, he peppered her grieving parents with emails claiming he had a new wolf drafted by T.D., giving him 50% of everything. According to the suit, he also took his girlfriend's computer and refused to return it to her family members unless they handed over T.T.'s expensive Cartier bracelet. But by the time they gave it to him and he dropped the laptop, it had been wiped clean. According to Miko, Anthony admitted that he had been cheating on T.T. with another woman, whom he had impregnated. She was shocked Anthony got someone else pregnant even though wanted to have children with T.T., but multiple rounds of in vitro fertilization failed, leaving T.T. drained and despondent. He said that he loved both women and wanted to be with both of them, but he couldn't handle the situation. He said that he told T.T. about his affair and his baby on the day she passed and that she reacted badly. He said that he tried to calm her down and make her see reason, but she wouldn't listen. He said that he left her alone in her apartment, hoping that she would cool off and call him back. She never did. Miko was outraged by Anthony. She realized that he had been lying to her and to T.T. all along, and that he had driven her sister to deletion with his cruel actions and words. Her passing was reported as self-deletion. T.T.'s family were just not clear that that's exactly what happened. And at the time, T.T. was working very hard to have a baby, so that process kind of defies someone who would want to gain their wings. The list went on of all my wishes of what I should have done or what I could have done, but as I was going down my list, I realized, you know what my sister knows. I love her, she decided to take legal action against him, accusing him of having undue influence over T.T.'s estate and business affairs and of causing her severe emotional distress that led to her deletion. She filed a lawsuit against him at Manhattan Supreme Court in 2015 seeking $130 million in damages. She claimed that Anthony had used T.T.'s vulnerability also and mental issues to gain access to her money and assets, and that he had used them to fund his own lifestyle and business ventures without T.T.'s knowledge or consent. She claimed that Anthony had forged T.T.'s signature on several documents, including a will that named him as the sole beneficiary of her estate, a life insurance policy that paid him $2 million upon her passing and a contract that gave him 50% ownership of Maestro's Classic. 
She alleged that Anthony had used these documents to claim T.T.'s fortune after her passing and that he had tried to prevent Miko from accessing T.T.'s personal belongings and business records. She also alleged that Anthony had harassed and threatened Miko and other members of T.T.'s family after T.T.'s passing, saying things like, You're next, and I'll delete you too. Family demanded that Anthony return all the money and property that he had taken from T.T. and that he be held accountable for his role in her passing. The lawsuit is still ongoing as of 2023 and no verdict has been reached yet. Anthony has denied all the allegations against him, saying that he loved T.T. dearly and that he was devastated by her death. He said that he never cheated on her or stole from her and that he never forged any documents or promised anyone. He said that he was the victim of a smear campaign by Miko and other people who were jealous of his relationship with T.T. He said that he had nothing to do with T.T.'s passing and that she had been suffering from depression long before they met. He said that he tried to help her overcome her issues. She refused to get professional help or medication. He said that the email he sent to Miko was written in a moment of grief and guilt and that he regretted sending it. He said that he was not after TT's money or fame. He only wanted to honor TT's legacy and wishes and that he had the legal right to do so. He said that he was willing to cooperate with the court and provide evidence to prove his innocence. He said that he missed T.T. every day and that he would always love her. He said he wants to make peace with the family. I don't want to see this turn into a problem. We do hope the truth of the matter will surface in court soon. So she met him on Match.com interesting. Even when they have the option to pick white men, they seem to always pick the bottom shelf ones. T.T. pretty much funded his lifestyle, made his white son's life easier, and built a home for him and his new white baby and girlfriend. Yet she didn't leave at any time. I wonder why she stayed in the beginning before he started to blackmail her. Divesting gone horribly wrong.